Hello everyone. So I get a lot of requests to teach people how to save and load in Unity. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it using my uh, my project here. As you can see, it loads fine. Um, I'm not going to do it in the Minecraft-like. So if you're planning to do the Minecraft-like stuff, you're going to need to adapt what I'm about to teach you. I'm not going to be teaching you the specific lines of code, because you can look those up. I'll be teaching you the methods you need to understand how to do it. I use uh, a library called Easy Save 2, and I understand that people don't want to use that library because it runs $40, and that's a lot of money for some people. Um, there are free libraries available, and they have much the same kind of functionality, but they tend to have a lot more baggage. You need to do things like open the file for writing and stuff, and it's just a little bit more annoying. Uh, but this Easy Save 2 is a good thing to use when I'm demonstrating because I can show you exactly what's going on uh, with much fewer lines of code. So the first thing you need to understand is that there is some kind of overseer object. Mine is called facility. The overseer object's job is to save all of the objects that need to be saved. And that means it has to understand, it has to have some method of finding all of the objects that need to be saved. Now that might be just you create a big list of objects and every time an object is created you add it to the list and every time it's destroyed you delete it from the list. In my case, I actually use a subset. I use a list that's only a subset of itself um, and that's because I have a very structured world and uh, the room tile understands how to save all of the other facilities or all of the other stations that are part of it. So the room tile saves itself and then it saves its various uh, attachments. Um, that means I don't have to trawl through all of the objects uh, to try and figure out which ones to save and which ones to discard because I don't want to save some of the objects. Things like walls. I don't actually need to save walls so I just don't bother. And the room tile figures out what can what it needs to save and what it doesn't. Um, and then at the end I keep track of the maximum UID counter and the reason I do that is because when I'm going to load I need to know what the maximum UID counter is so that I don't keep trying to load forever or give up too early. Um, if I know precisely what the maximum UID is, then I'll make sure to get all of the objects uh, that were saved, regardless of whether there's gaps in the UID chain or whatever. So that's all I do here. I tell every object that needs to be saved, save yourself, and then I save the number of objects I saved. Pretty basic. Here in load, this is where things get a little bit more complicated. First off, I do know how many I, I, I do know the max ID. There might be some gaps in the UID chain, but I do know the maximum UID I can reach. And you can see I save it here, and then I load it here. Very basic. And so I just march through all of the IDs, and I try and load every single object. Okay, that's pretty basic. But how do you load an object? Exactly what goes into loading an object into Unity? Well, you can't just open a file and like print the file to the screen. That doesn't really help. Unity has no concept of what this thing you saved is. It's just gibberish. That's why when you load an object, um, you actually have to get the fab, the prefab, that that object was. So, um, actually this isn't it. This is, this is me checking whether it's already loaded. This is it. So what I do is I actually save the name of the object, which will be the same as the name of the prefab, uh, maybe with clone attached. And so once I've saved the name of the object, then when I load the name of the object, I know what the name of the prefab is. And I've got a giant list of prefabs that, that the player is able to use, and I just march through that and, uh, and look for that particular prefab. And then I find the prefab, and I instantiate it. So here I've got newbie. Newbie is... Newbie... Come on. Newbie is the prefab, just the raw prefab. So maybe it's the desk prefab, maybe it's the, the floor tile prefab, maybe it's the water cooler prefab. It doesn't have any of the specific variables set. It's just the total default prefab. And then I set the UID, which tells it where in the file to look for itself, and then I load it from the file. So in order to load something into Unity, you have to create the prefab and then tell the prefab to load all of the values it needs. You can't just print from the file into the scene. There's no way of doing that. You have to print you have to put the prefab, the proper prefab into the scene and then have it set itself up. 
Now, if all your prefabs are the same prefab, that's not a big deal because you can just have, you know, the chunk prefab is always going to be the chunk prefab. You stick it in the scene, you load up the byte array, and, uh, and that's that. You don't need to be like, well, which kind of chunk prefab is it? You don't care. There's no reason to worry about that. But me, I've got 30 or 40 kinds of prefabs, and they all have very, very different base values, so I actually have to hunt through and find the exact prefab I need. Now, the prefabs are responsible for loading themselves from a file when told to. And here's the station prefab, which is one of my, oh, the station class, rather, which is one of my base classes. And here you can see, this is how it loads itself. Uh, first, I do some event wrangling. You don't probably don't, you probably don't need to do that. That's, that's something I'm doing for various reasons, uh, game reasons. But here in the load, all I do is, all I, all I do is load the transform and one little integer value that I use for wall rotations. Now this class has a whole bunch of other values in it, like uh, price, or um, input doc, or description. But all of those are part of the prefab. I don't have to worry about loading them from the file because they aren't going to change over the course of play. They're part of the prefab. The prefab that I first create has the correct values in it. I don't have to save them. I don't have to load them. And you can see that up here in the save to file as well. I only save the transform and the arbitrary value. I also save the name so that I can hunt down the prefab when I need to load it again. Now the last trick to saving and loading is that you want to be able to descend from this because it's a bad idea to have to write a fresh new save file every time you create a new descendant. Uh, my station has a lot of um, branching classes. Uh, for example, it's got the function station class, which has uh, uh, a couple more values like exterior, interior, uh, and inventory, and so on. And so I just overwrite the save and load. Um, and I call the base class, so it saves all the same stuff from there. And then I save the stuff I need to save on top of that. And the same is true when I load. I load the stuff, and then I load the stuff on top of that. Now, Easy Save 2 makes this really easy because you save and load via tags, so you don't ever get lost in your file. Uh, if you're doing this on your own, you may have to keep track of things like the number of line breaks or whatever, uh, depending on how you're saving and loading. Um, and I've done that before. It's not hideous, but um, one little mistake can end up screwing up your entire uh, save system down the line, so you have to be a little careful with that. Um, with this tag system, it's very, very straightforward. Now, there is one last piece to this puzzle, and that is, how do you relate two objects together? If I have a desk pointing to another, to another desk, how do, I, how do I do that? So let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, task station. The task station descends from function station, but it has an output that can point to any other function station. So I might have a desk that points to a desk. But when I save the output, I don't want to save the desk, because that's recursive. What if desk A is pointing to desk B and desk B is pointing to desk A? I end up saving desk A and then saving desk B inside of desk A and then saving desk A inside of desk B inside of desk A, and that's no good. Um, so when you're trying to talk about another object, you don't save the object. You save the, uh, the integer value. You save the UID. So desk A is actually desk 1, and desk B is actually desk 2. And all I do is save the 1 and save the 2. But you can't load that up when you're loading these things, because when I load desk 1, desk 2 hasn't loaded yet. So I can't say, oh, you're pointing to desk 2. Well, where is desk 2? If I go looking for desk 2, I'm going to get an error. Desk 2 hasn't loaded yet. That's why loading actually happens in two passes. First, you load up all of the objects characteristics. You create the object and you stick all the characteristics in it. Then you go back after all of the objects have been loaded and you do a second pass to relate the objects to each other. And I call that the special start update because it actually happens for me. I put it in the start. Um, uh, this gets called from start. And that's because start will always get called after uh, after all of the loading has been done because the loading just happens in one thread all at once and the frame the frames wait for it. So start doesn't get called until everything has been loaded. And then here in the special start update, I uh, save the file that I loaded it from so I can go and find it again. And then I just load the pieces I need. So here I load the integer value that I saved. So I load the UID that I saved. And if it's not there, um, uh, and then I get the station. I look for it. I just say, okay, all of you stations out there, would you raise your hand if you're ID number two? 
And if no one raises their hand, I log a warning. Um, but if someone does raise their hand, I have the output equal to it. It's that simple. And I do the exact same thing with the uh, uh, with this stuff here too, which is the uh, um, the energy providers, which is a more complicated setup. And of course, I have even more complicated setups where I have uh, output pipes, and the output pipes understand how to save themselves and then get loaded recursively. Um, so it can get quite complicated, but in general you won't need to, as long as you remember that loading happens in two passes. The first pass sets up all of the objects and all of their on all of their internal characteristics. The second pass relates the objects to each other. Long as you do that, you probably won't have any problems with it. And that's the basics of saving and loading. Now the actual lines you use may not look like this because you may not be using Easy Save 2. Um, you may be using a free library. And uh, if that's the case, that's fine. You may have to do a little bit of legwork, a little bit of elbow grease, to figure out exactly what lines you need to use exactly what pieces of code you need to use, but you should understand the basics of how it should function overall. There should be a, an overseer class that understands how to find every single object that needs to be saved and save it, and then, and then needs to understand how to load every single object that's in a file. The, act, the individual objects have to be able to save and load themselves from a, from a given file. And of course, there has to be two passes, one to set up the objects and one to relate them to each other. Don't forget that you need to put a prefab in the scene and then tell the prefab to load from a file because you can't just load straight from a file. You've got to put the right prefab in the scene and then tell it to take on the parameters from the file. And that's how you save and load basics in Unity. Don't use player prefs. Player prefs has a very, very small maximum size. I think it's one megabyte. So you're going to have to use some kind of file save system. Alright, that's it.